Radio tubers, uh, rather than go inside and finish doing my hair, uh, following to the last video that I really raced out, I'm just gonna try now. Now, Joe, now Joe's, Joe did a video. If you didn't see my last video, go and check out Joe's video. The link's in the description below. And he, damn bloody wise, and this is what he's talking about, having stuff lying around everywhere that can short circuit. So he throws it on the floor. Good work, Pete. So as I said in the last video, I've got one cell that's zero volt. Um, I've had a couple of cells here that were very, very low. After, I say they were quick, but after it was probably 24 hours, these two come back. Now this one hasn't come back. I've got it charging, it's charging at 1.4 amps, 63 watts or something at the moment via the solar. Um, I, I've literally sat out here for the last two or three hours um, since I made that last video trying to get the ISDT, the T8, to charge the battery just to bring it up a little bit so it, it's all good to go. I've also tried to obviously put it back up into the pack and see if it'll boost it. Uh, and I'd, I'm almost embarrassed to say I knew this was a thing, but I personally have never seen it myself. The backstory is, again, if you didn't see the last video, this is my development pack. I mess with it constantly. It doesn't have a battery management system on it. So let's take you through exactly what's... I just can't in good conscience let this rambling go on. So taking some notes, this will go a lot faster and a lot less painfully. So basically, I run a 14S battery with one cell that's effectively dead. What I believed happened was, well, what happened was, I wasn't monitoring it, and I got complacent. And there's there's no excuse for that. The, the, I know what I'm dealing with. I shouldn't have been complacent, yet I was. I run a 14S battery with one cell that was effectively dead. That one there, zero volts, couldn't revive it, couldn't do anything, tried with the ISDT, it, it just, I just couldn't, couldn't bring it back. It's dead. It's never going to be working again. Free to anybody who wants it. I was, I was filming for several days. I had the lights on. I was drawing from it, drawing from it, drawing from it. And when I took out the 157p pack and replaced it with this one, um, I never balanced it up. I just put it in there, never thinking I was going to use it. Then I started filming. Anyway, bad practice, Pete. I shouldn't have done it. I should know better. Thanks, Joe, for doing your video because you prompted me to come out. And, and definitely stop me from having a fire. Now, where the fire actually comes from, and I've done a little bit of research, so I sort of understand this a little bit better now, is so I've got a 14S battery pack with one dead battery, zero volts, so it's basically a 13S battery pack. Now, the charge controller, the, the, the solar charge controller, um, was set to 57.4 volts, right? Now, that divided by 14 was 4.1 volts per cell, perfectly safe. But we're dealing with 13S with the same 57.4 volts. 57.4 divided by 13 equals 4.14... I got this written down so I don't screw it up. 4.41 volts per cell. And that's where the fire comes from. Back to the bad hair and the... I'll even go to the... I'll, I'll even... If you want to stick around for the rest of the video, right? I'll take the pack out. I'll try and recharge it up. I'll just do some time lapses so it's not too much effort. But then I'll actually take the bus bars off because I'm gonna have to make another pack anyway. Uh, take the bus bars off and individually do each cell on camera. Um, that'll be after this. So if you're not interested, you know, leave a comment below. Make sure you go over and if you haven't already, look at Joe's video. Uh, I think I'm gonna harp on a bit about this video for some time. It is... Stunning in its delivery, I would say. It's really well done video. Um, it, it proves it's not just us that can be the problem. It's not just the end user. It's the cells themselves or outside, outside forces that can cause an issue. So, Pete, press the fast forward button. Find some bad music. Let's pull this thing out. All right, that's probably the world's shortest time lapse. Bit of a visual inspection, nice and slow, see if I can hold the camera steady. Uh, having a quick look at that, I can't see any fuses that are broken. And of course, I am just visualising that through uh, the camera screen. Plenty of old flux there. 
this pack was made I estimate about two and a half years ago two years ago so that is the positive side it looks like there's plenty of 2200s in there 2300 cells couple of Sanyos no heaters thank God there's no heat coming from it all although being flat you wouldn't expect there to be any heat go over to the negative side and let's have another pan I don't think this is too important other than it might teach us something one of you guys might pick something up that um, might lead us to do it better I'll grab the ISDT now see if you can actually see the screen on that on the positive Onto negative, turning back on again. Oh yeah, let's zoom in on this a little bit. So if we go there, cell count is 1S, LiPo battery. Some people say you don't do LiPo, but as, as long as it's 4.2 or something volts, you should be right, shouldn't you? Someone will tell me differently. Start, yes. And it says abnormal battery connection. Now that is from that's practically nothing now. The next plan was actually to get my resistance tester, but isn't it ironic? The battery's flat, so I can't use that. What else do I do now? I guess I take this bus bars off, disassemble the pack, and test individual cells. Uh, the quickest way to do that would be, let's get that out of here, turn that off. This is supposed to be a time-lapse, Pete. What's going on? The quickest way to do this would be grab some snippy tools, lean across the camera, do some cutting of some zip ties. I broke the tips off my snippy tools, so they're really annoying to use. Uh, what have we got at this end? Course you can see you can oh you can see that actually there you go and this should just be a matter of just breaking all the fuses pulling that off one by bus bar we can still use that again which will be good radio multimeter See if I can get it in shot. Uh, we'll go range it out so it zeroes it out. There we go, that'll do. Negative on. Now I'll just, just run through this fairly quickly without shouting each one out unless it's something significant. Negative, I did it around the wrong way, that doesn't matter. Swap it around for shits and giggles. Now if I've got any cells here that are 4.2 volts or something, we know that the fuse is broken. So we haven't got anything that's 0.1 volts, but we haven't got anything with a broken um, CID either. So the CID hasn't reset or popped or whatever you say. Does anybody else agree this is the most boring part of doing this job? Is doing voltage tests of hundreds of cells? Or well, 80 in this case, but I reckon I've done hundreds in the past. Oh, look at that, we've got one 3.8 volt cell. So that one obviously wasn't connected. Well, there you go I don't know what else to do or well I guess I could test that further but I think it's pretty pointless um, so I'll rip the bus bars off that rebuild that pack today and then I'll get it charged back up again and put it back up on the wall again so tubers if there's anybody out there that wants a pack of 80 cells with they're all faulty but if you want to like if you've got a YouTube channel or something and you want to keep doing it I'll give I'll give all these cells away maybe I should sell um, sign them and sell them and put Pete up on them <laughs> um, Pete should probably implement some more safety and I think I think I've got a good good kick up the ass and I hope other people in the community have as well so tubers 
That was the single most boring video in the world. Thank you very much for tuning in. Go and subscribe to Average Joe, and I'll see you on the next one. Turn the camera off. You still here? Let's try something different. So there we go, we've got the pack built up. If you made it this far, give us one of these. Uh, basically what I've done here is a five cells, got a bit of nickel strip on it. I used the K-Weld spot welder to weld it up and I took the, the 3D printed housing off for the electrodes and I used it handheld and I used it in auto function. And geez, it was fast, much faster, much cleaner weld. So I was very happy with that. There's only 16 uh, fuses on it. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, let's charge it back up, throw it back into service and I'll see yous on the next one.